So Sophia Smith-Gaylor is a multi-award winning reporter, author and TikTok creator based in London. So she recently hit 500,000 followers on TikTok. Um, she's been on the Forbes Under 3030 list, the 2022 Face to Watch in Books by the Evening Standard, and Vogue named her in their list of 2022's 25 most influential women in the UK. She began her career at the BBC where she reported on the complexities of contemporary faith across the BBC World Service. BBC Radio 4 and BBC World News as the network's first journalist in faith and ethics. She then worked as a senior news reporter at Vice World News, covering everything from gender violence and tech to the climate crisis and Europe's Christian hard right. Um, in 2021, she won Innovation of the Year for her TikTok journalism at the British Journalism Awards, when she was also named a voice of change by TikTok. Um, her first book, Losing It, Sex Education for the 21st Century, is out now, addressing the misinformation crisis and debunking sex myths. So she's currently freelancing, and welcome, Sophia. And um, this year, she's also launching some new training for algorithmic journalism. So I was having a look through her social profiles and just thinking, wow, you know, she's done so much. Is she online all the time? How does she manage it all without getting burnt out? And, and just a few thoughts, I was thinking, you know, it's brilliant that she's helping to change the perception that TikTok can be used for things as well as for entertainment, so for journalism and sort of putting a stamp on that, really. And also, I really like that she's resisted the urge to niche down too much, um, as is the general advice. We're all told to niche down and choose an area to focus on. Um, and she's resisted doing that to keep herself happy and productive online, she's focusing on multilingualism, public health and journalism. So she said, I resisted all marketing messaging to niche down and I still stand by it. I could have niched down as on one of the things I do and maybe have more followers, but that's not representative of all that brings me joy. Being there on there has meant I've stayed happy there. And she said a couple of things on social um, at a recent talk at the Oxford Union. As both a journalist and content creator, I'm in a weird position of being an influencer and investigating influencers. I think we could do with so much more support. And I also think there are many times we should be held more accountable. That kind of infrastructure on both sides is totally lacking. So that just got me thinking, you know, what can the, NA the NUJ do to help there? And also generally just making the comment that there's lots of news brands on, on TikTok, but where are the journalists based on a keynote speech that she did recently? And how, what can we do and how can journalists get started on the platform and how can we use it use it well? So welcome, Sophia. I'm really sorry if you're short on time. Um, maybe you could join us again a bit later, if, if possible. If not, we'll invite you back. So please feel free. Well, what I can do, I, if, I think I have share screen privileges. So hi, everyone. Something that I can do just to make sure that um, you, you feel like you get something out of today, because I want to make sure that you do. I'm just checking to see if it, hmm, it's not showing me. The window. Let's see if this happens. Oh, I don't think it's going to work. I'll send. I'll send something around that you can perhaps share over email uh, afterwards. That would um, be really helpful to everyone if you want to just be in touch of when I do have um, things coming out that are training opportunities. Sometimes they're in London and sometimes they're online. Um, so there's quite a lot that will be coming out later this month. But uh, probably the most valuable use of having me here is to answer questions. That was a really lovely introduction, so thank you. Um, I've been freelance since September. Uh, I've, I spent the first six to seven years of my journalism career in those two staff roles, one at the BBC, one at Vice News. And, yeah, it's whenever I publish whatever, whether it's um, a radio documentary that I make with the World Service or a piece that I, you know, a text piece that I file for BBC Future or Vice News, something like that. I also have the consideration, do I make a TikTok or an Instagram reel out of it? And I do. I've been making that vertical video with alongside my journalism now for over four years. Uh, and that's how I've accrued a quarter of a million Instagram followers and half a million TikTok followers. So um, generally it's about an hour extra work a day in terms of extra work that's required but I'm conscious that that's also because I'm a trained vid video journalist um so I got I got a big head start at the beginning I came from a, a master's in broadcast journalism at City so that's my background I'm gonna sort of be quiet and hopefully get around to answering like let's at least try and do three questions maybe 
um if anyone has them otherwise I can ramble but um I imagine them I don't know if there may be questions uh from the group but in terms of freelancing or or TikTok and real journalism real with a double e not not (laughs) r-e-a-l Uh, someone's asked my most viewed TikTok. Um, the most viewed, I made a TikTok for Vice News that broke the our app for the day because it got, I can't remember now, well over 20 million views uh, all within the space of a couple of days. And that was about a story that was unfolding in Madrid. I was the first reporter. Um, I speak Spanish and I was the first uh, sort of English language reporter to report on a story I'd seen in Spanish language news media um, and that was that was the biggest story that I saw um, I can't show it now but if you you know I'm all over the I'm plastered all over the internet um, I, <laughs> you'll be able to find my content no problem uh, so Sophia after that uh, very you hear? yes yeah oh hi Sophia uh, after that very uh, successful career in various actual jobs, I just wondered why you went freelance and how you set yourself up from that to continue in a way that would, uh, I suppose, be satisfying and reasonably successful. Um, yeah, I would say that obviously there are loads of benefits to being in a staff journalism role, namely, you know, job security but I think all, all everyone here has made a decision to go freelance at some point um and because hopefully you were like this is the best decision for me actually is better decision than a staff role and that was that was the, the decision that I came to uh, in terms of the most flexible work I could do frankly the most lucrative you know uh I I can make a far better income freelance doing what I do than I can as a staff journalist um I have, you know, I have more revenue streams now that I am straddling the space between both um, sort of traditional journalism, lots of broadcasting, um, and then similarly social media work. So for me, it was quite, it was a hard choice leaving staff journalism in that I love, I love what comes with staff journalism. I love going to the pub at the end of the day, you know, with all your colleagues, and I love the camaraderie when you know in the office and stuff like that but uh equally I've come from both at the BBC and Vice where uh you know there's just this endless rhetoric of jobs being cut or layoffs or resources being depleted uh and that hasn't been a pleasant environment to be in uh that has you know dwarfed my whole journalism career so far really I've escaped so many redundancy rounds and layoffs and I've only been in journalism six years six or seven years so um yeah for me there's just so much more freedom and if anything security as a freelancer which is pretty depressing when you look at when you look at sort of the state of our journalism industry here that 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 is how I feel I feel more secure frankly being freelance than I than I did as a staff well that's a full quote um you said um Verticals, can you expand on that? Vertical. So I um the main content that I make is vertical video, and vertical video simply means video that would be viewed on your smartphone in the shape of your smartphone. So it for for vertical viewing as opposed to I would describe anything from traditional television to Netflix, BBC iPlayer streaming to YouTube that's horizontal uh and then you may remember that a few years ago on social media videos weren't necessarily vertical shaped they would be any of us who were were cutting video knows we were cutting square video a lot of the time um we were cutting horizontal for social media and then gradually uh as platforms have changed we're being encouraged increasingly to cut for vertical so Uh, currently the two main platforms that I use are TikTok and Instagram and they are both platforms that are currently amplifying vertical video as the most engaging and interactive product i.e if you are on Instagram if you have an Instagram account and you wake up and you're like I needed strategy where I really grow on Instagram this month 
because of the way that the app currently is, that would be pushing out vertical video because that drives that's driving the most activity. Um, so that's why I specialize in. I specialize in vertical video. And this revolution was sort of happening before TikTok came, but when TikTok came, it really, really turbo boosted it. I'm deeply relieved. It's, uh, for a moment, I thought it was marketing bargain vertical, which, um, which I'm, I'm thankful to have forgotten what that meant. Thank you. Quite a few questions in the chat. There's, uh, how does a journalist start on TikTok? It only accepts a few minutes of video. Isn't it longer now? Haven't they extended that? It is. All of my videos are about 90 seconds. So that would be, that's a minute 30, uh, 270 words. Anyone here who's ever worked in broadcasting knows that uh, um, on the hour, BBC radio and television regularly demands that you make content in smaller amounts of time than that. Uh, anyone who's done a radio bulletin knows that you've got to say a story in not very long. So it's very, time is not an issue on TikTok. And I can pack a lot more in a minute and a half on TikTok than I could in a traditional television package. Uh, in terms of getting started on there, you just have to start making, it's, I know it's, it, it's easier said than done, but you can only get started on there by making content. Like you just have to start making content and seeing what works and what doesn't work. I had uh, two questions. One, um, how do you uh, make money from your social media posts? And the second question is really specific because um, I was interested, you said that you make, um, <clears throat> say for example, radio programs for well service. Then when you put them up on TikTok, are they still BBC branded or do you make a sort of separate version to go on your TikTok? Yeah, so in terms of journalism I've done for elsewhere and how I've put it on TikTok, the, the example I've probably done the most of, of that is, you know, I spent two years as a senior news reporter at Vice News and my, my main role there was to file text copy for the website and I would also make TikTok about the article that I did. Um, so that's the most common example that I would do it for. I, I, am, I am currently making a BBC radio documentary and I won't be making a TikTok or video out of it because um I don't feel like it like you know I pick and choose I don't do it out of every single piece of content that I do um so you kind of surprise don't mind if you make a separate um no not at all if anything um if anything they really they really liked it because it got a lot more it would get the story a lot more reach um so yeah, I at Vice, I also would make TikToks for their account. It would often be the case, the Madrid example that I gave earlier, that that video that I made for them got 20 plus million views. I also made my own TikTok that was a slightly different cut because it's me making it on my own platform. You know, it, it's not, it wasn't the Vice version that went through a different editorial sign-off process and went out on their account. This one was just me that did it for mine. I have a totally different audience. And even that got well over a million views as well. So there are loads of examples where lots of content about the same thing would be going out at the same time. The first part of my question is that when you put the videos on TikTok or any or Instagram, how does that generate revenue for you? So it can generate revenue in what I would describe as direct and indirect ways. Um, so indirect and direct ways, an example of direct ways would be that you can, if you reach a certain threshold on TikTok, same with YouTube, uh, you can access a kind of creator fund uh, where you can get uh, money from the platform depend per view. That's an example of direct income that may be accrued from platforms. An example of indirect income would be me making a, you know, it's happened before that I've made a video and then I get emailed by an editor saying, I love that video. Could you write a piece on it? Um, or it might be that the, the times I've been asked to speak in public because people have seen me on TikTok. So for me, there are there are direct and indirect revenue streams that have come from being on there. And then also, since I went freelance, I have been able to take advantage of brand collaborations. So I'm very, very picky with the brand collaborations that I take. Uh, and uh, at the minute, I've kind of mainly only taken them from language learning apps because uh, my audience love language learning. It's one of the key content areas that I do. Um, and I get to do a brand collaboration where I will um, 
receive money as a content partner for making that video. And then I also secure what's normally a deal or discount for my followers. So it's kind of, for me, it's win-win. They get something out of it and so do I. Manuela says, how do you manage your personas, careers, being a journalist and also a content creator stroke influencer? Also the ethics of being perceived as an influencer while working as a journalist, which is what you mentioned in your social post. Yeah, so I think everyone knows I'm very picky if I do take a kind of brand deal. So, and I'm very, I talk about that with my audience. So I'm very transparent with them about it. Um, and beyond that, certainly in, in the space that I'm in, especially when I've had to report on technology and content creation so much, it's, it's to my advantage that I know both of the worlds rather than to my detriment. That's, that's what I've experienced. I am deeply intrigued by TikTok, but I feel very distrustful of the company in respect of my data confidentiality and the likelihood of it infecting my phone otherwise. Can, can you say anything to kind of reassure me that if I put TikTok on my phone, I'm not making everything that I do accessible to the Chinese Communist Party? I would say if you are an investigative journalist who and you have details, you have source details on your device that you're, you, you really care about, I would use a different device. And that's because of a story that we had that, from the FT a couple of years ago. Um, if you're not, then um, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried about stuff that's on my phone. If I started an, an, investig an investigation, that might, you know, go into this area. I would think maybe I'd ask for another device to do the investigation on, but other, otherwise I'm, I'm not worried. How are you experimenting with AI? You said something about you've got a little mini me, mini me AI. Oh uh, yeah. So um, it will either be in one week or two weeks. I'm just waiting um, to hear back, but um, I'm launching a bunch of things. One of them is a Skillshare course. Uh, I might be able to send around a referral link for that actually, but I don't know if anyone's used Skillshare here, but it's been so helpful for me. Um, I've used it for both sort of playfully and professionally. So I used it years ago to do an ink drawing class because I really wanted to learn how to do like ink drawing illustrations. But equally, I've used Skillshare to train myself up to learn how to use Google ads, for example. So it's been really helpful for my journalism and sort of marketing know-how. But anyway, I've made a Skillshare class for how to do factual storytelling on TikTok and Instagram with the vertical video that I've described that's going to be available soon and um, I've just been building a lot of assets around this course going out one of them is going to be a notion template that I've built which includes how how I content create and plan everything that I do so it's kind of my, my brain on virtual paper um, and then I've also been creating an AI chatbot and I've built uh, I call her Safina because it's like little Sophia. Um, and Safina uses chat, uh, chat GPT's GPT-4 language learning model. Uh, and it uses the private data of the of over 100 TikTok transcripts that I wrote, which led to viral video. Um, so it's the only chatbot in the world that exists like this and can do this and is, and is built on my method. Um, and I, yeah, I've been, I've been building, building Safina in my spare time and it's been, it's been loads of fun. I'm, I'm very curious about AI, but I, um, I don't come from that kind of techie background. So the platform I've been using has been a, a no code platform. Um, that's been very, um, a big, a big, but interesting learning curve for me. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what I've been building in my spare time and Safina, We'll be ready soon. Yeah. Ready for everyone to use. Amazing. How do you have any spare time? <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> Being online so much and not burning out. It's a struggle. It really is. I admire you. Done loads. Well, what I will do is I'll send um there's there's just like a a really, really short Google form that I can send to you and anyone can fill it in if they want to be kept updated and when some of my resources come out um hopefully might be useful for people but yeah thank you for having me tonight oh you're welcome if you can pop back pop back otherwise we'll have you back again in the future you'd be very welcome sorry to keep you to keep you waiting i didn't realize you had another appointment so 
Um, and you have a Substack. Yes, she does have a Substack. I can share the links for that. I've got some some notes here and links, so I'm happy to do that. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Nice to see you. Bye. Bye.